Wow, guys, Marco Rubio destroys the CBS host by fact-checking her on the debate lies. He was laughing the whole entire time. Check this out. So I have a lot to get to with you, but I want to focus in on what you and your committee have been told. I know U.S. intelligence and the FBI said foreign actors are increasing their election interference as we get closer to November. This week, the Senate is going to be briefed in full on this. What is the scenario that is concerning to you? Well, I think it's going to become a fact of life in the 21st century. It's just very easy now for anyone to do it. You don't have to be a big nation state. So uh, they're kind of all different. The, the, the Russians are looking at what are the pre-existing fractures in our country, and then they try to sow division, getting us to fight with one another. That's primarily what we've seen them focused on, you know, sowing messages out there, uh, including with inauthentic things that they create. You know, you use AI, you make a fake video, whatever, you put it out there just to get Americans to fight against each other. In the case of uh, Iran, Iran has, uh, it seems to be more specifically focused on Donald Trump. I mean, it's been now publicly documented they're trying to kill him. And so if Iran's trying to kill Donald Trump, they most certainly don't want him to win the election. And um, so that's what their efforts have been, including p uh, attempted hack and leak operations and things of this nature. The, the Chinese are, are really kind of new into this business or growing into this business of it. And they seem increasingly in some, at least in past cases that we've seen publicly disclosed, going after specific candidates that they view as being anti-China. I don't think they want Donald Trump to win, but I, I do think you've seen them focus on things like congressional races in the past. Mm -hmm. and, and I also think they're laying the groundwork for more expansive operations in the future on influencing American public opinion on things like Taiwan and what's right. happening in the South China Sea and things of that nature. So there are multiple actors out there that are in the space now, and I think you'll see more in the years to come because you don't really need, you know, to build uh, anything really expensive. You just mm -hmm. need access to the World Wide Web. And, you know, we're an open country, an open society with open means of communication. And the best way to deal with all this is for awareness. People right. to understand everything you see on the Internet isn't true. Right. So I'll tell you guys this. I'll tell you guys this much. With all this stuff that they're, tr they're trying to, throw at Trump, right? All this all these cases, these assassination attempts, these massive, massive data leaks. They're doing this for a reason because they know this guy will get us out of the slump that America is in today. They're trying to take over us. They're trying to perform these massive psyops, control everybody with the media and try to frame this guy as someone bad when in reality he wants what's best for us. I know people that are very close to me that still think this guy is the bad guy. And I still, every day, and I try to spread this truth. I try to spread this truth out to you guys. I try to spread this truth out to people around me. But it's it's only so much you could do. My mom always told me, you could lead someone to the water, but you can't make them drink it. But I feel like we just have to keep going. We, we just have to keep telling people, this is what you need to believe in. This is what you need to research. Just find your truth. And if they research and still want to go vote blue, let them do it. But I feel like with the... All the research that you could do, I feel like that if they were to do enough of it, that they wouldn't want to vote blue. That they would see this guy is really for you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I I can't see how you could vote for a person like Kamala. Man, let's keep this video going. I don't want to rant real long. I, I It's been real emotional for me for these past few days because I've been seeing a lot of stuff in the media, man. So I'm just going to try not to talk too much. We're going to keep playing this video out. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. Right, exactly. That's why we want to talk about it. Um, Microsoft's president testified before your committee, and as he put it, the most perilous time is the 48 hours right before the election. He described this as a race between not just Trump and Harris, but Iran versus Trump and Russia versus Harris. Do you think the United States has gotten smarter in how it responds? And, and have we learned from what happened in 2016? Yeah, and so what he alluded to are some instances in the past where some fake audio or fake video generated using AI is put out there and it influences the election 48 hours. I think we're a little bit insulated from that, not that we should let our guard down, but a lot of the votes are already in by the time 48 hours comes around. So that doesn't mean it's irrelevant in very close races. It could tip the scales. I do think all the way around, here's the bottom line. If you see something out there, a video that just seems way too scandalous, uh, I would pause for a second and make sure that it can be verified. Th that's my advice to everybody is yeah. don't just believe something you see for the first time. It may have been something that happened five years ago and they're making it look like it happened yesterday. It may be something that uh, that has been made up uh, right. using an AI uh, mechanism to do so. 
And, uh, and sure. so th that would be my advice to people as well. Again, I'm not saying 48 hours before the election is irrelevant in America. Mm -hmm. I am saying it's probably less impactful than it is in some of these other countries who don't have mail voting, early voting, where so many of the votes are already in by then. Well, the, the Biden administration has issued sanctions, warnings, these public disclosures. One of them this week was about Iran trying to hurt the Trump campaign by hacking and stealing information and then sending it to the Biden campaign. This was similar to that hack and leak operation disclosed uh, in terms of trying to target journalists. And I know it was widely reported information about you, sir, was stolen and given to journalists. Do you know what was stolen? No, but I doubt it's anything that you probably couldn't find with, uh, you know, just a search online of past stories that have been written and things of that nature. Exactly. But I, look, I think you're going to seek more of that in the years to come. And I don't think that the, you know, to credit to the media outlets and so forth, I remind them that didn't run with it. I remind everybody, you know, back in 2016 when this first happened, um, you know, I said that's a foreign operation uh, that was used targeting the Clinton campaign. So this is going to become one of those things that is I'm not saying we should be happy about it or accepting of it, but we need to be just understanding that this is now going to become a regular feature, not just of presidential races. You know, yeah. presidential races get so much attention that I think you can wade through some of that. It benefits from that, at least. But I think some of these lower ballot races are the ones that are particularly more susceptible, because if you're running for Congress or Senate somewhere, let's say a congressional seat, and someone dumps something like this on you, uh, it's much harder uh, to get the truth out there in time uh, for it to be cleared up. There just isn't going to be as much interest and there isn't going to be as much people covering it. Well, uh, Donald. I believe that we, the people that are sitting here listening to this guy talk, we know that he's talking the truth. We know that this stuff is the stuff that people need to hear. The stuff that people don't want to hear that want to keep voting blue. I don't want to keep saying that, but this is the type of stuff that we need to spread. Not only my videos, but people out here that are trying to spread this truth, this is what we need to hear, guys. Because if we don't hear it, we don't know it. And if we don't research it, we don't know it. I keep telling you guys, man, this is why I do this type of stuff, man, because I used to be so asleep. There'd be times where I'd be so asleep. I wouldn't want to see anything like this. But, man, this stuff is the future. This guy, Marco Rubio, Marco Rubio he's exposing the truth. And you, you can see this lady. Margaret, she's she just out there for a gotcha question. That That's all she's looking for, man. And I hate that these people get paid to spread this stuff. I hate it. Let's finish this video, guys. Trump posted um, about the hack and leak operation attributed to Iran, but he said it was evidence that the FBI was spying on him and then blamed the vice president for spying on him. That is not at yeah, all I the don't, case. I, no, I, well, again, I don't know anything more than what's been publicly reported when it comes to that hack and leak operation. Perhaps we'll know more this week. I, uh, but again, it doesn't surprise me that someone, you know, clicked on something, they got into your system, they stole documents, and then they try to give it to the media. And look, here, here's what we're going to see one day. It's not just that they're going to take it and give it to a campaign or the media. They're going to give it to somebody, some online journalist, somebody who will run with this right. stuff and will begin to report on it. Or maybe even alter it. For example, make up a fake email where it looks like a real email. Maybe it is a real email, but they alter a few words in it and put it out there. And by the time you put out that fire, um, it, it you know it's done damage. In right. a presidential race, everybody will cover that, and I think you can get to the truth a lot faster. In a down ballot race, it's going to be a lot harder for some candidate to prove that that email is fake. By the time they do, the yes. election may be over. Just to be clear, though, it was the FBI that publicly disclose this with the Intelligence Committee as happening, not the FBI right. spying That's on correct. the Trump campaign. Um, I'll tell you guys, this is just like the J.D. Vance interview. You can't sit there and argue with a person like this, man, because when you sit there and you, you join her little circus, you stoop down to her level and she beats you with experience. She's a fool. So on that full level, she's going to beat you every time because she knows how to fool around and just ask you crazy questions and try to make you look crazy right along with her. We all know, we the people, we all know that she is not speaking anything worth listening to. This person's so far, so lost that, man, I'm telling you guys, man, we need to boycott stuff like this. Let's, let's finish this video. I, I keep telling you guys I don't want to talk too much. There are, when we want to talk about threats to Mr. Trump, it was just last Sunday. There was the second uh, near miss. There are FBI investigations underway into what happened here. Um, but Senator Vance said he doesn't trust Kamala Harris's Department of Justice to really investigate this stuff. 
Can you assure the American people that law enforcement is conducting a full and impartial investigation? Well, I think people on the ground in law enforcement want to do so. What information is made available to the American public, which deserves to know what is behind each one, not just one, but two assassination attempts of Donald Trump. I think that's where this lack of trust in institutions. Look, multiple people in the Federal Bureau of Investigation faced charges or were fired for misconduct in the way they handled issues about Donald Trump just eight years ago. So I think people are rightful to be suspicious and distrusting. And that's why it's so damaging, for example, when 51 former intelligence officials, formers, sign a letter saying that a laptop of Hunter Biden is Russian disinformation, then it turns out not to be true. And then people logically conclude, well, this is an example of how these agencies and our institutions work against candidates they don't like. It undermines people's trust in our institutions. And that lack of trust is eroded in government, in the media, yes. in, in our agencies within government. And unfortunately, that's why people, that's why disclosure and openness with regards to these investigations is so critical. It's not just because we want to know, it's right. because it's important to preserve trust in our institutions. And we're but not you, seeing that. More on the second than the first, but, we've, but, you know, but we're not seeing it. But you trust the FBI and can assure the public that they are investigating these assassination attempts that J.D. Vance says they're not taking seriously? I trust rank and file on the field FBI agents to do their job. Okay. I don't know what their leadership in some of these agencies and the mid-level will do with it because you've seen a history in the past of their being biased. I hope that's not true. Yeah. And, and here, more importantly, I don't. I don't. I think what the real question is, if in fact they do discover, let's just say I'm speculating. I'm not saying I know this to be true or even that I think is true. But let's say there is a foreign nexus to one of these two attempts. Would they allow that information to be put out there to the American public? before the election in November. I can't tell you with 100% certainty that there wouldn't be uh, those within the agency. If any of this information was leaking for Kamala Harris or any of these, if any of this stuff was going on for Kamala Harris, they would suppress it and they would get it deleted. It will be wiped off from the face of the earth. There, there's, there's horrible, horrible videos about that woman on the internet, but you have to do so much digging to be able to find it. But if you want to see something negative about Trump, all you have to Google is, Trump does a good deed, and they'll show you nothing but negative stuff. And why is this lady blinking so much? I, I feel like she's lying or she's reading off of something, or she's very nervous that she doesn't want to ask any of this stuff. Yes, absolutely. I think that's okay. an important factor for people to Look, know. Um, I wanted to ask you about whether you have heard or have any information in regard to a foreign nexus much. in regard to the bomb threats made in Springfield, Ohio. The governor of Ohio said they had over 30 and he said the person who made the calls came from overseas. This was after Trump and Vance put the focus on Haitian migrants in that town. Yeah, only what's been reported publicly, but that would not be uncommon. For example, a lot of these, uh, uh, these calls where they call and tell the SWAT team to go to someone's house because there's a murder occurring, a lot of these come from overseas as well. And unfortunately, there are, you know, that, that, that doesn't mean it's being directed by a government overseas. It okay. could be. I haven't heard that. But just because they're coming from overseas doesn't mean a government is behind it. But, yeah, we have these kinds of individuals all over the world that yeah. like to do these kinds of things. Well, uh, here in this country, in terms of people being inspired to take action, uh, we have been looking, as you heard, about um, what the perception of the public is right now, particularly with some of the things that Mr. Trump and Mr. Vance say. Our poll shows two-thirds of Trump supporters believe those false and disparaging claims about Haitian migrants are true. Uh, the governor of Ohio has said he is a big supporter of the ticket, but he's sad about this because there's no evidence of these claims. He's disparaging migrants who are legal. So, of course, the people that are voting for Kamala Harris wouldn't tell you or wouldn't want to vote and say that stuff is true. They don't want to go and do research because if you do research, it's going to lead you to vote red. There's actual footage on YouTube of... Well, police footage of them running into a woman on the street that was eating a neighbor's cat. And then they want to say, oh, she was a citizen. That's another lie. She wasn't a citizen. That was another lie. And there's more, more crazy graphic videos online. I'm not going to give the sites, but there's crazy graphic videos online of this stuff going on. Why are people there calling and saying their their pets are disappearing? Why, why would someone's pets di just disappear? I have a dog. I mean, it runs away. You might find it eventually, but like, come on, man. You don't get hundreds and hundreds of calls saying this stuff is happening that you just sweep it under the rug. That's not what this is. It's something way bigger than that, guys. Let's finish this video out. 
and the verbal attacks dilute and cloud what should be a winning argument for Republicans about the border. Do you agree that well, this kind I, of thing is a distraction from the broader point well, and dangerous? Well, it shouldn't be a distraction because at a minimum, it shouldn't keep us from, for example, saying, OK, well, maybe I don't believe the dogs and the cats thing, but there are literally people moving in by the by the thousands in the yes. case of Springfield, Charleroi in Pennsylvania. You know, that's a 4,000 person city that has 2,500 migrants. And I think one of the problems here is that somehow Americans who are not intolerant, they're not bigots, they're not, but they are troubled by the fact that their city is being flooded. In Springfield, you see reports, these are legitimate reports of huge increases in traffic accidents leading to yes. slower police response times, overcrowded schools. I mean, the strain this puts on a community. And if you complain about it, somehow you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're a hater. No, that we've is talked the story here that everyday Americans are being made to feel like they're haters because they're complaining about something all any of us would complain. If any of us, I don't care who we are, live in a city of 4,000 yeah. people and you bring in 2,500 migrants overnight into one place, there are going to be problems. Problems. And there people are, are going to complain problems. that doesn't make you a bigot. There are absolutely and that's, problems that, that should be what we're focused on. That the on. governor has documented and that we have talked about here. But it wasn't everyday people making those claims. It was the Republican nominee and his vice president making those false claims about Haitian well, those migrants. Are claims, right. no, those rhetoric. are claims that people... Those are claims that people in those communities made. Maybe some have now recanted or moved aside from it. But that should not take us away from the fundamental truth. And that is, there, is ha there are th real impacts happening when you move people into communities, as has been done by design by the Biden administration yes, but, and allowing people to cross the border. But you know, you're, you're in leadership. So you know words matter. Yeah, and I think one of the words that should matter the most is there is a real migratory crisis. Wow, guys, the world's absolutely mad because crime used to never happen in some of these areas. Now you're giving these people a driver license. When I had to take the test maybe two or three times to get my driver license, that's like giving a kid a gun. A kid. And then they can go out and do whatever they want with it. Man, the world is mad and we need to do our research and we need to vote responsibly. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, let me know what you react to. We're out.